Hi, my name is Juan Manuel Parrilla and this is a second demo about a CTP factory workflow. This time we will go through the Edge cluster deployment using OpenShift pipelines. Let's do a quick resume about what we did in the last demo. First thing we did was uh, check the cluster, the hub cluster, looking for any possible issues. Second one was bootstrapping the OpenShift pipelines operator and all the artifacts necessary to perform the CTP flow. Then we execute the pipelines on top of the hub, going through some stages that basically performs the hub configuration to be capable to deploy edge clusters. And last one was check that all was working fine, the hub cluster, GTPD, and internal registry, etc. So the plan for today's demo is basically go through all the stages on the, on the edge cluster deployment phase. Okay, what we will do right now is create some virtual machines to host the edge cluster. For now, we will use the kcli command to create four empty machines with four disks, 64 gigs of RAM, and 24 virtual CPUs. We, found, we have a script that does this for us inside of the hub folder. This script also creates the DNS entries for the spoke cluster, which are basically the registry routes, NUBA routes, API, API ins, etc. After that, we can see some virtual machines that are already up here and are all of them down and ready to be provisioned using the pipeline. Let's take a look to the edge cluster file. It's the same as, as we used before, but this time has a different shape. Now we have filled the spoke section with the node details. And from here we can see each of the nodes that are part of the edge cluster and inside of it the, the external interface name that will be connected to the factory including the MAC address, the internal interface name that will be connected to the enclosure switch with also uh, the MAC address, the BMC URL which, which starts with Redfish with the proper credentials, the disk where the operative system will be deployed and the last one, the disk that will be used to create the storage cluster under OCS. Now we can trigger the pipeline execution command to deploy the edge cluster. This command is mostly the same, but the pipeline name will be different. And once the pipeline is triggered, we can see that this pipeline now refers to a pipeline run in the browser. Inside this pipeline run, we can see the different stages. The first one will validate that the hub cluster are working properly. Also verify the DNS entries, asking to the DNS server for the API and the ingress of the edge cluster. Then the edge deployment will start, initially rendering the custom resources for ACM and system installer based on the spokes.yaml file you provided as a parameter. Now, the edge deployment has started and we can see some log entries asking for things like user entry required and so on. So no worries about that. Uh, you don't need to do anything. Just wait until it finishes. Now we will fast forward uh, this part during the edge deployment that takes approximately 30 minutes and we will go through some edge statuses uh, but not relevant for this demo.
Okay, looks like the edge cluster deployment has finished and it started the next stage. Let's explain what is this for. With the edge cluster already accessible, we are creating an image content source policy and a catalog source to point the content image sources to the hub registry. With those changes, a spot cluster will be able to deploy the rest of the things because remember, it is fully disconnected. After that, here comes an important stage on the pipeline where Metal LB and NM state operator will be deployed. This stage will allow uh, the factory to access the API and ingress of the Spook cluster using a external interface. NM state will load a profile per master node where it set the external interface for the HTCP and auto DNS. And then the Metal LB is deployed creating two custom resources, an address pool to hook both interfaces as one and a service for the API and the ingress to be accessible at the OpenShift level. One of the steps that comes after the deployment of this Metal LB will check the availability of this API and ingress from external accesses. So we will ensure that this step will finish correctly. After that, here comes the, de the deployment of local storage operator and OCS pieces that will be necessary for the query deployment in a posterior step. Local storage operator will consume the disk mentioned in the spokes.yaml file, and local storage operator also will transform the disk into a PBs using a custom resource called local volume. Then OpenShift Storage will consume those PBs generated by a local storage operator to deploy the full OCS stack. And it will form our storage cluster. Perfect. Now it's time to deploy Quay and perform the container image sync between the hub registry and the edge cluster, including the OpenSIF and OLM images. After that, we will apply the image content source policies and the catalog source to point to the edge internal registry, making this edge cluster autonomous. Perfect. Now that query registry was successfully deployed, it will start the OpenSIF and OLM container image synchronization. It will take more or less one hour depending on how many operators we have in the pipeline. Okay, looks like the OLM scene was finished and now it's time to update the pool secret and also, as I mentioned before, make the expo cluster autonomous.
another task that it's working in a parallel process is the CTP factory workflow configuration UI deployment. This one will help you to configure the enclosure when it's already relocated. Once we have set the internal registry and have the uh, ICSP and catalog sources in place, we will deploy the, the worker node into our enclosure. This worker node will join the cluster as a typical OpenShift node. Hope you enjoyed the demo and thanks for watching.